So here's a trouble ticket from Shane. It says here, unable to access share drive after Windows update. And it says, hi, I am having trouble accessing the share drive on my computer after the latest Windows update. I tried to restart my computer, but it did not help. I also checked the network settings and they seem to be fine. The error message I get when I try to open the share drive is the network path was not found. I need access to the share drive network on some important files. Can you help me resolve this issue? Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you, Shane, for submitting this ticket. I appreciate it. If you'd like to submit tickets to my ticketing system, I'll post a link in the first comment below. Also, if you don't mind, please say just hello, hi, or thank you for creating these type of videos. I really appreciate it. All right, so the issue here is the network path is not found it was not found so this could be a couple of different issues and first one could be that network is down right but he did say that the network settings seem fine so we can rule that out the next reason for this is that you lost access to that shared drive or the path to it has changed the meaning that the network path for that drive is completely different that shared drive may not even exist anymore and this is why my segue to this video is basically to talk about an alternative to shared drives that are being used. This is kind of an old way of going about things and things with being now on the cloud. Everything's on the cloud nowadays. So there is really no other reason, no excuse to not go towards cloud storage. All right, so let's see how we can do this. Here is an example of what a typical shared drive looks like so here here it is this is your computer this pc and here is your shared drive for example so if i go inside of here you can see there are folders and there are some just files in there it could be anything the problem is again with a sh normal shared drive typically in this case it's a shared drive that's simply a server somewhere on your network that is providing you with storage nowadays everything is on the cloud and for those reasons you should move to clouds the best way to do this in my opinion well i should say the easiest way to go about it is to simply start using teams teams is very likely going to be on your work computer because everybody uses microsoft office products and also microsoft operating system not many businesses say that their regular workstations are using linux although it's possible anyway the teams is more likely going to be prevalent and present within your company and for those reasons you'd have some capability in using the cloud storage and now welcome to the cloud now i'm logged in as shane smith by the way shane is a real person that submitted this ticket however i created a fictional login id for shane so that way we can recreate to what i'm talking about here we are logged into Teams right now, and this is cloud. Everything is cloud-based, and in this case, we're going to use Teams as storage. Once you log into Teams, of course, you have chats right up here, and there's really nothing going on because this is a new account for Shane. But if you select Teams on the left side here, you will see options of what you are part of as in groups. This usually would be the group that you are part of as in sense which department you work in. So for example, let's say your IT, chances are you would have an IT group here and the point of it is so that way you can collaborate with the people that work in your IT department. Or if you are in HR, finance, anything else, chances are you would have it in here. In this case, I just kind of had and created, went ahead and created Shane's account and he was put in a global group that is for the entire company. So for those reasons, we can't simply just add files and upload them in here because he doesn't have the permissions to do so. So what does he need to do? He needs to request storage for his department specifically. In this case, we're assuming that Shane is a manager, let's say, for example, finance department. He's manager of finance department, and he wants a place to store his files, which, which once used to be in a shared network folder. And for those reasons, we're going to create a new group specifically for Shane and finance department. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are in Microsoft Teams Administration Center. From here, we're going to select Teams right under here and select Manage Teams. 
scroll down and look to see if there is a finance department already there if not then go ahead and create one select add create a name for your team in this case i actually want to be very specific and say finance department shared file storage again this is i just choose to do this but if there is a department that's just called finance this is just kind of semantics I, in this case i choose to say finance department shared file storage just so that it's easier to follow and that way i can specifically say who it is and what it is for in this case i'm going to add team owner and remember we have a request from shane so i'm going to look up shane and make him an owner a team owner so that way he can upload those shared files that are on the shared network by himself i don't at this point have to do any of this for him in this case i am given full access and full control to shane smith because he is the manager and he can make these decisions so from here on out once I select apply, Shane will have the full responsibility for those files that are shared on the network. All right, now Shane has full access to it. And you can see it popped in as soon as I switched to this other machine that it popped right in. And here it is. Under here, we can select general. And then under general, while it's on the right side, we can select files. And because Shane is the owner, he can now start to upload everything that's on that common drive specifically for his team. Again, this gives Shane full control of what is being shared. He can modify it at any time. He doesn't have to reach out to IT at any point and have them control any of the access issues. From here on out, Shane can add people into this group. So let's go ahead and upload all the files that we have on our shared folder. Here it is. Here's all the stuff that we have. Here's our shared network drive. So let's go ahead and just upload the entire thing. I'm going to select upload right here, select folder and navigate to shared network drive, which is right here. Let's go ahead and do this once more. Here is our shared network drive. And instead of uploading each individual one, I'm just going to select share entire folder i'm going to upload the whole thing and it's going to take some time here is the progress on the right hand side if you click on it it'll tell you how long it's going to take roughly but it will upload it and the great thing about it is that once you upload this let's say you have some word or excel any microsoft office files on here they can be edited in real time by all of the people that are part of this group who have access to and again shane can give them access to at any time he wants so here's all the stuff that we've just uploaded shane has uploaded all the stuff and now everything that is within our network share we can just ignore and stop using that so let's get a little bit organized here now that we have our finance department we have uploaded our files over here Let's create a post that is right here in general and just say as as Shane, this is where all of the shared files are stored. Please select files on the right side. Okay. We are posting this here so that there is a notification for our department. As soon as they see this, as soon as somebody becomes part of this group, they can see what this is about. And it says here, this is where all the shared files are stored. Please select files on the right side. Select files, really straightforward. And then we can go in here and look at all the posts on all the, I'm sorry, all the files that are in there. So let's say we want to add members to this so we can share these files. Of course, we can add our entire department or individual members. So if we select add members, we can add anybody who has a Microsoft account. So let's go ahead and select Grady here. 
let's go ahead and select let me see who else we have well i don't need access to it uh henrietta sure let's add henrietta uh adele and that's good enough for now and if we decided to basically make a redundancy and let's say we have a lead in the department or a supervisor we can make them a secondary owner of this so they can also do this in case shane is not around so you can delegate this and you can change that so let's make grady here second owner select add and now all of these people have access to the same stuff here so here it is files again it's all the same stuff we can switch to let's say here we can switch to adele logged in as adele right here and if we go to teams you can see that now she suddenly has this on the bottom. So she's part of many other groups as well. But here is our newly created finance department shared file storage. Select general. Here is what Shane said. This is where all the shared files are stored. Please select files right on the, on the right side. She's going to reply and say, great, thanks. Okay, select files. And now she has access to the same, same files. And any changes made to this is all real time. You can access this to, through Teams. And for example, let's say you open up any of these documents, they should be opening up automatically in Edge. And here it is. So this is a task document. If I was to select any of these other files, you can also select to download them let's say this is obviously a zip file here is a just a setup file so let's say you're working in it and you want to upload copies of some kind of setup file let's say there is some kind of custom installed software you can upload anything to this literally anything and if you want to download it you can download it create shortcuts you can share it you can specifically give access to somebody else Kind of goes the same as for any other files that are in your OneDrive when it comes to that. So what else? Let's say you don't have a way to add this or create this for the users that are at your company. Let's say you are tier one or tier two help desk or on-site support and you don't have any access to this. Well, obviously you have to request assistance from the desktop support sys admin or whoever has login or access to the microsoft 365 what i showed you earlier was with assumption that you have access to microsoft 365 for your company well you just have to simply reach out to them if you don't know who they are so how can you do this well you can submit a ticket here's one way to do it this is done this here is an example of it. Please create a Teams group for my department. Usually do this. Normally, the main thing that they would ask for is business justification for creating this. And if they come back to you and ask why, then say, well, I need to move my files from the common drive or from the network share drive into this into the teams storage so that way we can have you know so we can use it you know simple as that alternatively there might be an email there might be an email you can just send to for example system let's say 365 sysadmin at koboman.com or something whatever it is that the, the contact is and you can say requesting teams group for my department we need it for storage for file storage of course if this email doesn't exist so it's going to fail but always feel free comfortable to reach out to your it that is you know your local it or whoever usually helps you with your stuff and it, that could be help desk as far as i know it just depends on the company that you work at but if it is help desk call help desk if you have somebody on site that can help you you know your it person 
then reach out to them. They will gladly help you and uh, uh, guide you through this. So as a side note, I mean, when you are in here, other things you can do is not just, you know, share and collaborate at the same time, but you can get even more organized. You see how these folders are all yellow color and stuff like that. You can organize this to change the color. For example, click the three dots next to it, change the folder color to, let's say, green. And, or in this one, let's say, try this one to, I don't know, orange color, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it, it's really cool, in my opinion, because it gives you more as a user, gives you more control over your files. And I know this could be one of those things for some people that's just like you store it and then you just kind of forget about it and then you come back to it later and then you can search for it, which obviously is just right up here, select files and then specifically search through the files and it will find it for you, whatever it is that you're looking for. But some people, some people use uh, these files, these shared files on real time basis. And when these files are stored on a regular shared drive, let's say it's an Excel file and you open it up, only one person at a time can edit these files. Here you bypass all of that and all of you can together edit these files. Here just to show you here is, and I, this might be a common thing, but it may not be so common. You can see now that I'm, uh, that I have it open. Here is Adele is open it up. So this is Adele open it up and I'm going to leave the cursor right here. But if I go back to Shane, logged in as Shane over here and let's see, Shane opens it up. Where's his teams? Here it is. If Shane opens it up at the same time, you can see, he can see that Adele is already in there and um, making changes. All right, signed in to Shane. Let's go to these files. Let's go ahead and open up that same document that Adele has opened. And once we do that, we can see that Adele is also in here and making changes. You can see right here, Adele Vance, she's got her cursor over there and uh, you can see that she is looking at it. This is how you can tell that somebody else is looking at it and you can collaborate at the same time. You can see where she might start typing here, but if I switch back to her, now you can see that she can see that the Shane is, Shane's cursor is right there. So if he wants to type, that you, you can see him type in real time. And I don't know how to pull that off here without, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. I think it's pretty cool. And I think everybody might as well start switching over to this because the old way of storing files is just not as good as as, as it was once, you know, back then when, where you had no other choice. I hope this video is educational. Uh, if you like this type of content, consider becoming a member of this channel. I made it so it's super cheap. It's only $1.99. Of course, it's never required. I'm just saying that if you really find these videos helpful, uh, you might, you know, you might consider doing that. Um, the main reason for that would be early access to videos like this. All right. I hope you have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.